This is Doug Green, and I'm the publisher of Telecom Reseller, and I'm with Jim Terrell, who's with TNS. Jim, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for welcoming me to the show. So, you know, we're uh, we're going to be continuing our conversation we began in May about robocalls, and of course, since then, I've we've done a number of podcasts as our listeners show uh, know on this uh, on this topic. It's impacting everybody every day. Um, but uh, before we get into our topic at hand, could you just tell us briefly, what is TNS? Yeah, so TNS stands for Transaction Network Services, and carriers leverage TNS's data, uh, data analytics to better identify robocall trends and tactics and can utilize our sol solution to help their customers detect and stop robocalls. So we kind of sit in the middle of the network. We see about a billion call events every single day across about four or 500 carriers, whether they use, utilize our service or, or not, we see, we see the, the, you know, the traffic from, from across all of those different carriers. And we provide a solution across four of the top six uh, wireless carriers within the U.S., Verizon, Sprint, U.S. Cellular, and C Spire. So you've been in an excellent sort of front row seat, so to speak, to uh, see the sort of emerging crisis. Yeah, we really, we really have. So we've seen, you know, the use of, you know, toll free numbers. You know, neighbor. We we, we see the advent of neighbor spoofing, which is, uh, you know, a call that that very resembles your own number. Uh, we've seen, you know, customer care numbers being spoofed. We've seen real mobile numbers being spoofed. Um, and so that's, you know, kind of, kind of where the advent of, uh, uh, of what the bad actors are doing. They can, they continue to change their, their tactics so that they can, and strategies so that they can then, um, you know, try to defraud, uh, you know, unsuspecting subscribers. So yeah, let's dive into that. I mean, since we even last talked, I think the situation's gotten worse. Can you kind of define for us the overall situation? Just how bad is robocalling right now? Yeah, so we see, like I said, we see about a billion call events a day. Uh, about thirty percent of them typically are high risk or nuisance. Um, you know, what the FCC would define as unwanted calls. That's about so that's about three hundred million a day. Uh, that we would see, you know, multiply that out, uh, you know, if we see half of all of the calls or, yeah, so if we see half of all of the calls, that would equate to about 600 million, uh, you know, unwanted robocalls every single day. And let's talk now about the solutions. So, you know, we have in the public domain a number of, of solutions. Maybe you can define the two different ways that, that are being looked at. Yeah, so they're, so the carriers have their own specific apps. Like I said, we provide, you know, solutions to, you know, the top wireless carriers and, and those are probably a little bit more solid, uh, in that it's typically integrated within the network. There's a lot more, um, you know, analytics that, that, that go around it in real time. Um, so we provide, you know, our, our algorithm is, you know, constantly looking at the big data. Constantly looking at the 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 uh, uh, tactics that 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 are that the bad guys are using, and, and you know make decisions, you know based on on that to you know to deliver a reputation to our uh, to our carrier customers. There are some over the top apps as well. Uh, I'm not going to name what they are, but you can you know kind of go into a you know a Google. Google Store or the Apple Store and, and find out what they are. They typically rely more on blacklists than whitelists. But, but you know, the challenge that they have is, is, you know, when you start having these attacks that, you know, may come from one number, they're going to rotate through that number and, and go to another number. Uh, it's kind of hard to maintain a whitelist, blacklist in, in, in real time and, and understand, you know, kind of the intent of the in the intent of the call and to, and to manage it that way. So, um, you know, I would, I would kind of encourage anybody that's a subscriber to, you know, maybe look towards their, look, look towards what their, um, carrier provides from a free perspective as well as from, 
um, as well as from a paid perspective as well. The paid subscription, you know, the paid service via an app is going to deliver much more, uh, many more features than just, you know, kind of a, a and typically the, the freemium or the free version typically is going to just give an advice of risk, but, but you'll be able to, you know, control a lot more options, um, provide, you know, uh, much, much greater deep, uh, you know, great detail on, you know, who could potentially be calling you, um, as well as providing, you know, feedback that then feeds back into, uh, you know, our algorithm, you know, did we get the call right? Did we get the call, uh, uh, you know, wrong on, you know, based on, and we look at, we look at the crowdsource feedback that, you know, helps, helps the algorithm learn and, and improve as well. So on the legislative front, I, my understanding is there's a, two ways this is being uh, approached. There's the Stop Bad Robocalls Act, and that also this sort of differentiates itself from something called the Trace Act. Can you tell me about these two acts and what they're about? Yeah, absolutely. So the Trace Act actually passed in the Senate, was led by uh, Senator Markey in May, and it gives the FCC enforcement tools. Um, some of the things that it does is it allows uh, the FCC um, uh, uh, increases their their ability to go back from one year to three years. So you know sometimes it does take a, a take a while to identify who the originator of the uh, of the action is, and so that allows them um, you know more time to do that. It also eliminates a, a citation rule. So initially the FCC had to had to send a citation to the bad actor telling them to stop. And then if they didn't stop, then, uh, then, you know, then they could go, uh, and, and take action. Uh, it also increased the amount of the fine from $500 to $10,000 per call. But more importantly, um, what it does is a well, does a, allows as well as, uh, it directs the FCC to require the service providers to implement a call authentication framework called, uh, Sir Shaken. Uh, within 18 months of, of the enablement of the act, um, uh, and and also then provides a safe harbor for voice uh, voice service providers that that block calls um, under that uh, under the stir shaken protocol. So if there's if there's a belief that that you know either via you know via you know that I couldn't attest to who the call came from. I could then block that call on the network and not even deliver it to the to the handset of the subscriber. So that's that's kind of the the summary of the Trace Act. Um, for for the uh, the Stop Robocall Act, that's actually in the House. There's about seven different uh, House uh, House bills that are that are floating around. The Stop Robocall, uh, Stopping Bad Robocall Act. Uh, Shared, or, you know, submitted by you know, Congressman Pallone is probably the one that's got the most, the most uh, uh, fanfare, if you will. Uh, basically, his includes uh, text messages uh, that would include text messages as well. Although it's not nearly as bad of a problem, in that it's much harder to get you know short SMS codes um, and to be able to spoof numbers from an SMS perspective. Uh, it also includes a reassigned database, which the FTC is actually already working on. Um, the reassigned database makes sure that, that when your number gets, uh, that, that for legitimate callers, if, if I'm, if I'm going to call you, I have to check the reassigned number database to make sure that, that it's still really your phone number. So, you know, a lot of the times people change phone numbers and you'll still get calls, you know, potentially from a debt collector, for example. Um, when it, you know, belong to somebody else. So, so, you know, that helps the legitimate, you know, call originators to, uh, you know, make sure that they're contacting the right people. However, you know, the bad actors aren't going to go and look at the reassigned number database. They're going to, you know, use, you know, use all the tactics that they have to, you know, just blast out, you know, as many calls as they can and, and not worry about what's legal or, or illegal. Um, and, and, and the other thing that, that's, that's interesting is that it specifies that there should be no additional cost to subscribers. Um, so for wireless services, it's going to say 
um, you know, they're they're expecting that that you know the service provider at least provides something something for free. It does speci specify a call authentication framework within the bill, but it doesn't necessarily mention uh, stir shake and um, and so what what I, what will happen is you know they'll have to reconcile the, the seven different bills within the house, bring that forward for passage. I'm sure that it'll pass. Like I said, the, the Trace Act was very bi bipartisan. Uh, there was only one dissenting vote uh, from Rand Paul, and, and the word that I've gotten from, from, you know, why did he dissent? He didn't think that it went far enough. Um, so, again, from, a, from a, whether it's in the House or the Senate, very, very uh, bipartisan, very bipartisan efforts. Everybody knows that it's, it, it's an issue based on the, you know, kind of the numbers that I talked about before. You know, again, we see, you know, 300 million, you know, calls that, 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 that the American consumers don't want to see. They'll then have to reconcile what the House bill and what the Senate bill is and then, you know, take that for, for President Trump to then, for them to, uh, for that to become a, for that to become a bill. Uh, and, and, you know, timing on that looks like it'll be, you know, towards the end of the year. At the same time, the FTC is also, uh, you know, just recently yesterday held a uh, stir shaken summit that held that, that included uh, TNS as well as you know some of the larger uh, tier one providers as well as some of the smaller tier two, tier three wireless uh, providers as well. And you know, I think everybody uh, there there was great collaboration and and there's a there's a sense that that. That they want to, uh, you know, to be able to comply and get this call authentication framework in place by the end of the year. At least that's what, you know, Chairman Pai is. His goal is that the major service providers have adopted and are using this, this stir shaken call authentication framework uh, by the end of the year. Otherwise he's, you know, kind of put in a threat that says, I'm going to, you know, you don't want me to, you know, mandate this. Um, you know, it'd be much better for you if you just did this voluntarily. And, you know, fortunately within the industry, everybody is, has been really positive, cooperative, um, and, and really want to, uh, to do it. You know, the, the, the message that we got from the tier one providers was to the tier two and tier three was start now, don't wait, learn what you can. Um, you know, the tier ones have been at it for 18 months, 24 months. Uh, and so, um, you know, obviously, you know, the more, the earlier you can start, the more you can learn and, 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 and adopt it to, you know, the nuances within your own carrier network. So, yeah, I was going to ask, uh, what does this all mean for individual companies? And let's maybe take the communities one by one for the carriers, for the MSPs, cloud companies, and so on. What should they be doing now? Yeah. So the, so the tier ones, you know, are already, you know, have already, you know, implemented stir shaken to some degree within their own networks. You've seen, you know, AT&T, Comcast, Verizon say that they've, you know, they've, they've, uh, you know, passed, passed calls with the, uh, with the, uh, what we call a first staff parameters. What, you know, it, it, it gives you what level of attestation that, that I can, uh, uh, say that I, that I know where the number came from and, and, and it came from a legitimate source or that it came from, I knew about the number, but I'm, I'm not sure, you know, whether they actually own that or, you know, or, you know, only a gateway attestation, which says, I knew where it came in from, but I don't know, you know, whether that person actually owns it. So what long way of saying is, is that it'll help reduce, it'll help reduce uh, the, the amount of spoofing that'll happen of a number where, um, which which is what the which is what the bad actors have been doing. They've been uh they've been uh you know spoofing spoofing numbers that, that they that they really don't own. So for example, you know, we've seen, you know, the Apple Care number be spoofed and, and we know that it's not uh we know that Apple doesn't usually make that many that many calls from an outbound perspective to their to their uh to their subscribers. So um That'll it, it, so stir shaking will will help with that. So you won't be able to, you know, use 
or, or use somebody else's, um, you know, real mobile telephone number, which we've, which we've seen, you know, quite a bit of is, as well. So that'll help cutting, cut down on that is, is more, uh, as more tier one, you know, as the tier ones do that, that'll probably that, you know, we, we've seen that that'll reduce the high risk traffic, uh, you know, by about 10, you know, by about 10%, about 10% of the calls act uh, of, of, of the negative calls that we see come from a, come from a tier one network, then, you know, the, the, the rest, Will come from a you know a tier you know a tier two tier three uh, regional or you know national um, VoIP provider typically is, is is where we've you know kind of seen some of the some of the bad bad traffic uh, come in and it's been confirmed by U.S. Telecom who has uh, who does trace back efforts to help the FCC uh, you know find where the call uh, call uh, initially originated. The other good thing about what Stir Shaken really does is within the um, within the SIP header, it does it, it does show what the originating network is. So it'll it'll help that much more in the traceback efforts to find out where the bad actors are uh, originating their traffic. So, Jim, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what TNS brings to bear, what resources your company offers everybody in regard to robocall. Yeah, great question, Doug. So, like I, like I mentioned a little bit before, is we're really the analytics engine behind, behind what the carriers uh, use to, to help their subscribers. One of the things that came out from the FCC uh, summit yesterday around Stir Shaken was Stir Shaken, you know, is just one. It's not a silver bullet. It's one part of a multi-layered approach or a multi-pronged approach. The analytics that we provide, um, you know, help as well. So basically, you know, Stir Shaken says, hey, did, did I know, do I know who call, you know, do I know who's calling, um, you know, from that particular number? And the answer is yes, but it doesn't also address the intent that the analytics can get to. So, with our call guardian solution, uh, that's that's the way that, that that can layer in. Certainly, you know, the parameters that we get from Stir Shaken can help us uh, identify spoofing a little bit quicker. Um, and uh, again, it's a it's a multi multi layered approach. The other thing that 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 uh, that, that was noticeable is, is the tier two, tier threes, you know, don't have the, the luxury or the time necessarily to, you know, go implement a stir shake and solution. I, I mentioned that, you know, the Verizons and the AT&Ts and the Comcast of the world have been working, you know, 18 to 24 months on this solution. Uh, and, and unfortunately tier two, tier threes don't have, you know, the, the you know the breadth of, of of engineering resources and you know the the, the financial wherewithal etc. So we've partnered with a company called Mata Switch to that 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 provides the stir shaking component of, uh, with our analytics as a hosted solution. So you know we've 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 looked at um, you know providing you know a hosted solution for for those smaller tier two, tier three carriers. Uh, and in fact, we've had, you know, some, some pretty good success in, in signing a couple up. One of them is uh, Inland Cellular. So, um, you know, they're gonna, they just signed a contract with us and we'll be uh, implementing that solution. What it does is, is it, you know, it reduces the, the, the burden and, and we provide a, you know, hosted managed solution for them so we can do all of the, the signing and verification and authentication um, for them, along with, you know, the analytics that, that can then, um, you know, layer on, you know, more, more rich awareness of what's going on with that particular, with that particular call. So um, that's, that's where, that, that's where we're at and, and, and how we can help with the, with the robocall solution. Again, we sell directly to carriers. We don't, um, we don't, you know, sell directly to the consumers like, you know, some other, uh, some other, uh, analytics providers do where they have their own version and a carrier version. Um, 
and and again, because we see so many call events that, that I talked about in a, in, in a single day, and we can analyze that in real time and make decisions in real time for the uh, for the carriers. Uh, that's 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 where we uh, that's where we help. So, in the short term, um, you know, I think you know, let's look to you know more carriers deploying this call authentication technology. It becomes more ubiquitous uh, in you know towards the uh, end of probably next year. Uh, I think then we'll start to see uh, a better better user experience and 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 an increased trust in the voice ecosystem that will allow you to, hey, should I answer that call or not answer that call? It will give me a better better indication um, that, that, you know, the bad guys are, you know, hopefully, you know, it, it, it's a little bit harder for them and that, and that uh, you know, there will be less, uh, this will be less of an issue and it will go from being a, you know, multi-billion dollar problem with fraud uh, you know, down to, you know, a much smaller number. Well, Jim, uh, I want to thank you uh, again for joining me today and for giving us a, a nice overview of uh, basically a real-time crisis and the public policy approaches to its resolution and also what uh, people can do, at least on the carrier level. Where can we learn more? Go to our website, www.tnsi.com, uh, to learn more. And, uh, you know, it was a pleasure, Doug. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, you know, probably the number one day of everybody's, uh, existence. And, you know, you, you buy a several hundred dollar or a thousand dollar smartphone. You don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want to not be able to use it. Yeah, it's, it's certainly the, the number one uh, crisis facing really all of UC right now. I'm sure we're going to be talking about it again. But for now, Jim, thank you very much. Thanks again, Doc.